What's happening guys? It's Nick from S2 Strategic Defense. Hopefully all is well. Want to do a real quick video with you guys, talk a little bit about force on force training. I get a lot of questions about this. So let's talk about what it is, what it is not. I'll go through some of the guns and gear that we use and then we'll wrap up by talking about why I think everybody should be involved with a good quality force on force training program. So first, what is force on force? The term force on force is analogous with reality based training or scenario based training, meaning we can replicate real world environments, real world encounters, real world circumstances and let you train and test within those parameters. Now I focus on the word test. Force on force is essentially the sparring of, of firearms training, right? We want to test. We're looking for good proper physical ability. We're looking for good usage of uh, tactics and strategy and most importantly we're looking for cognitive ability. It's not about how many trigger presses you get. It's not about the round count. It's about your decision making in a uh, high speed, low drag, high stress environment. And that's something that's a real life skill in a real world violent encounter. Got to make good decisions. So that's what force on force allows you to do. There's some instructors out there who use some of this gear. They call it training and it's kind of a disservice. You, they have their clients doing like, you know, hondo rolls over the hood and climbing in and out of cars and punching and kicking anything that's in sight, shooting indiscriminately. And it's just terrible to watch their videos on Instagram or on YouTube or on Facebook, any of these things. Because you have a client, an end user who's asking you to help them improve. And what you're doing is you're programming and rewarding negative behavior. Slow that shit down. Use something like a cert pistol so that way it's completely dry fire walk them through things, tell them what they're doing, why they're doing it, how they do it, and progressively build them into some of the force on force training stuff. That's how it's done properly. So if you guys are part of that, be advised, okay? So let's take a look at some of the equipment that we use in force on force training. I'll start with the gun. Everybody likes to see the guns first. This is a Glock 17T. It's not a Glock for Smurfs. It's blue, that indicates that it's a training gun. Um, modeled after the Glock 17. Now there's conversion kits out there. You could change out your M&Ps or your SIGs or whatever you want. I don't like the conversion kits. They seem to go down a lot more often. They have catastrophic failures, meaning I have to strip the gun down, fix it, and then put it back into action, where the Glock 17T seems to be much more reliable. Give you guys a close-up uh, of this. So there's the Glock 17T, right? All of the functions of a regular Glock 17, uh, all of the uh, like the slide lock and the mag release, all that's located in the same place. So even it's got the same sights. All right, so it feels, looks, and handles just like a regular 17T with the safety precautions built into it. You can't run live ammo in this. I'll give you guys a quick look at why. This is one of the safety things that we uh, like about the 17T. If you take a look at the end of the barrel you'll see that there's an offset in there, right? It's not open like a regular 9 mil or 40 or 45 or whatever. It can only allow for the uh, marking cartridge to go through it. So that's one of the safety precautions that they build into the 17T into the barrel. And so I like that because safety first, right? Speaking of which, let's talk about safety equipment. There's a few different types of helmets that we use. This is one of the helmets that we use. Good protection, good visibility. Uh, this is one of the older models, but it still works very well. So we have a whole bunch of these. Since then, I've upgraded to this style of helmet. All the stuff is made by a company called MPG. I love these guys. I know one of the owners. Uh, they spend a lot of time on making sure that the equipment works well, that it's functional, um, and that it's safe for the end user. One of the reasons why I've chose these kinds of helmets rather than some of the other brands that are out there we can run marking cartridges in uh, carbines, AR-15s. And so if you're going to run your AR-15 and we change out the bolt carrier group, you want to be able to use that gun. When you have those big helmets that look like the space balls, like Darth helmet type of thing, you can't get down on the optic. You can't manipulate the gun right side to left side because you got this giant dome that's over your head that's getting in the way all of the time. So I like these. They seem to be much more functional. Underneath the helmet, you're going to be wearing this padded balaclava, okay? And so that's going to give you some other protection for the rest of the head. Below, you're going to be wearing this throat guard, right? So that way, if you have a stray round that's coming through, it'll protect it. And it's not so solid like part of a helmet 
where it's going to prevent you from being able to turn your head left to right, up and down. So we have that. Most importantly, the groin protection. Nobody likes getting shot in the willy, okay? So we have to wear it. So these are the critical components that you have to have. The helmet, the balaclava, the throat guard, and then the groin protection. So all soft targets have proper padded protection going over them. Otherwise, just a hoodie and jeans and you're going to be just fine. So let's talk a little bit about ammo. Uh, here is one of the marking cartridges, okay? This is a self-contained unit, so it doesn't expend any gases. Uh, it's not loud. You don't even need hearing protection to run this stuff. The projectile portion of it is a plastic, uh, water-soluble based um, uh, marking paint that's in there, so the cleanup is really simple. They travel at like 550 to 600 feet per second, so you feel it but it's not gonna kill you. It's not gonna leave like open gashes or any of that stuff. Uh, a really good projectile to have, but you are gonna feel it, okay? And so that's some of the equipment that we use in Force on Force. Other than that, when we start running the carbines and we have the, the swaps for uh, the bolt carrier group so you can run your gun, your sling, your light, your optic, just marking cartridge and my bolt carrier group. So that's pretty cool. So why should you be involved with the proper force on force training program? Now this is important, especially for our concealed carry people and our defensive pistols guys and law enforcement guys. You can do all of the flat range work you want. You can do all of the mat work you want. You can do all of the, the uh, tactical shoot house kind of stuff that you want. But at the end of the day, the brass is only going one way and you're not making decisions on that, and you're not making uh, an interaction with that verbal commands and report back and forth. You're sending brass one way, and that comes with some training scars, right? You don't use threat cover principles uh, as much as you have to because nothing's coming back your way. If you can arm the bad guy, and you have to make decisions in real time, is this a, a shoot, no shoot? Is this a, a life-threatening situation? What kind of force should I put forward? Is it a, you know, for the, for the cops, taser? Is it a handcuffs? Is it OC spray? For unarmed combatives, uh, you know, it's, there's so many things that you have to make on the, on the fly, as far as decisions go, that you can't do anywhere else except for force on force training. For law enforcement, this is pretty readily available. In the civilian market, you see it very limited for a bunch of different reasons. One, the guys who have picked up some used gear on stuff like Gunbroker or whatever, they're not certified to teach this stuff. They don't have access to the, all of the safety equipment. They don't have access to you know, good equipment in general as far as marking cartridges and that kind of stuff. So they're just doing whatever they want to do. It's kind of Yahoo kind of shit, all right? That's one aspect. The second aspect of it is after you get certified through all this stuff, insurance is expensive. And so that's a cost that we have to keep in mind. Third thing that we have to keep in mind, the cost of ammo is double the cost of live fire. Okay, so it gets expensive, especially for people who are gaming it and just doing nothing but, you know, 100 trigger presses on one person or whatever is going on. And so it gets expensive. But the biggest thing is actually the end user. Too many people are afraid that it's going to hurt. And so they don't want to train in force on force. It, they're afraid of what's going to happen to them. And they're afraid of failing. But I'll tell you what, improvement will come through failure. You know what hurts? It hurts when you take a 45 to the chest. It hurts when you shoot the wrong person or some 10-year-old kid that's standing by because you didn't take the responsibility of training. Somebody has to call that person's family. Somebody has to call your family and tell you what's going on. There's going to be courts involved. There's going to be legal stuff involved. It's just problematic. So it's much better to take your skills, do all of your dry fire, your live fire, your unarmed combatives, all that other training, do it. But then enter into a good force on force training program, go through some different things. You're gonna find a whole bunch of training scars and failures, work on those things, spin it back up, go right back into that same class and do it all over again until you get it right. Do it over and over and over again, find those failures, make improvements, get right back after it. So. That's the importance of force on force, and that's why I think everybody should be involved. If you guys don't have any courses available near you, feel free to email me, s2strategic at gmail.com. I'll see if I know somebody that's in your area, or if you'd like to train with me, I'd love to train with you guys. Have guns, will travel. Contact me again, uh, either through my website, s2strategic.com, or by email at s2strategic at gmail.com. Until then, be safe, be well, I'll see you guys on the next video.